you into like killing a child girl, so on and so forth, that I was discussing in Juma, but I won't go into details here. Over here again, like in the previous surah, over here it's saying, look, let, man, look at his food, right? Just look at your food. Do you think that's just an accident? We, we cause the rain to come down in abundance and then all of this comes out again. But now, over there was, That's the, the word used there. Over here is, Again. Okay, so these different words are used for sounds. Then, Sutta Taqweer. Sutta Taqweer is very interesting. Uh, how much time do I have? Uh, six minutes. Okay, good. Sutta Taqweer is interesting. I want to actually spend maybe more time on this surah. The previous two surahs are doing what? In the first surah, Naziat, it was talked about Musa going to Fir'aun, right? And in this surah that we just read, it talked about the Prophet going to Quraysh. See this? So this is how they're paired up. And the response of Fir'aun to, uh, to Musa, and then in Surah Al-Abasa wa Tawalla, the response of the Quraysh to the Prophet Now in this surah, you'll see something very interesting. Now in this surah, the depiction of the Day of Judgment goes, I mean, I don't have time, but the depiction of the Day of Judgment reaches its climax, you can say. If you really think about the words, each and every word in the beginning, it reaches its climax. It says, وَإِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ And when the sun, uh, usually it's been translated as when the sun is unwrapped. But the better translation is, when the sun becomes dim. Imagine that you come out of your graves and the sun is dim. Everything is opposite. Everything is opposite to what you understand it to be. وَإِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ And when the stars, they also have their lost their glitter. If you notice in the previous surah, it uses, uh, well, okay, I'm going to come to that later. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ صُيِّرَتْ You're so used to mountains being still, but on that day, mountains will be moving. They will be moving. Not your experience, not your human experience, right? وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ أُطِّلَتْ Now the point that, uh, two pregnancies are mentioned here. This is the first pregnancy. I'm going to come to the second pregnancy. And when the camel who is ready to give, give birth. You, this is value, this is va for the desert man to have a camel that's giving birth to other camels is <coughs> a very valuable thing. So Allah says, وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ أُطِّلَتْ When the 10 month pregnant camel is left alone, a person doesn't care about his wealth that day. The most valuable thing you don't care about. وَإِذَا الْوُهُوشُ هُشِرَتْ and on the day when animals are gathered together. You know, the best example of this is when there is some tragedy, like some hurricane comes or some flood comes. Usually animals that are prey and predator, they don't sit together. Let's say if there is a, a bird and then some mouse, just for example, right? Two people, two animals that eat each other. Or a human hunter and an animal, they don't come together, except in cases what? When there's a big flood, when there's some big catastrophe on earth, you'll see like where the island, where it's still, there's no water there. All the animals that would usually be fighting against each other are there because they're more concerned about the flood than they are about eating each other up. So Allah gives the depiction here, even animals, they'll be just like that. They'll be all together. They'll all be sitting together because they're worried about what they're seeing is so different from what they're used to. And so Allah says, and when the animals are gathered together and they are even animals, you know, animals are very sensitive to the environment. And animals, you know, will start uh, making noise and doing things like dogs barking before earthquakes come or before hurricanes come. So these are animals, they're being put, they come together because they're so, even animals are so scared. Again, something completely out of human experience. When the, not, not Bahar, but Bihar, the plural. When the oceans and the seas, all of them, they will be on fire, right? Usually what is water used for? It's used to extinguish light. But on this day, the water will be like fuel for the fire. It will be like fuel for the fire. And when the, when, the, when the oceans are lit up with fire. Now imagine you're out of your grave and you're seeing this. 
right? The mountains are moving, animals all prey, like lions sitting with a rabbit, for example. And you're seeing all this scene. This is the scene that's being depicted. And then, وَإِذَا النَّفُوسُ زُوِّجَتْ And that day your soul and your... This is one meaning. This ayah has many meanings. I'm just giving one for now. When your body and your soul are brought back together. وَإِذَا النَّفُوسُ زُوِّجَتْ وَإِذَا الْمَوْهُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ And then when it's brought back together, the baby that is done, abortion is done to it when it's unjustly. You know, the babies are being killed. Even in this most civilized country, babies are being killed by the thousands every day. Allah says about the Arabs what they used to do and about people that are killing the babies. And like I said in Juma also, you know, we are also kin killing the girl. Because why? We want girls to become like men in this society. Right? We take away their femininity. We don't want them to have the femininity. Right? We want to change their femininity to be more masculine. And this is just as good as just destroying them, just like the, uh, the just, just like the Arabs were doing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْعُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ When the baby girl is asked, what? بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ For what reason, O oh baby, were you killed? For what reason? And you know what's so interesting in the Qur'an? Allah says that the, the, the person will not be wanting to be with his sons. A person will what? He will run from... His what? His sons. It doesn't say he will run from his daughters. Why do you think that? Because the daughters will be a protection on the day of judgment. Daughters will be a protection on the day of judgment. So, yeah, dunya too, of course. And then, bi ayi dham min qutilat. Wa idha suhufu nushirat. Wa idha sama ukushitat. And the sky is now here. Again, another point. The sky is peeled open. You know, gushitat is used is a word used in the Arabic language when you peel something open from one end to the next end. So whether the, our blue and, and then what will be the color of the sky? This is in Surah Rahman. Fakadihan. The sky will become red. You ever seen those pictures of uh, space where they have this very beautiful red, uh, like it's a red ointment thing? You ever seen that? It's like so beautiful. But uh, I wish I had a picture to show you all. But that's the picture depicted in Surah Rahman. Kind of like that. وَإِذَا And then وَإِذَا سُحُفُ النُّسِرَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِتَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُسْلِفَتْ Now here, for the believers, I'll just leave it at this. The main point of this surah, let me just take an extra minute and then I'll finish. The main point of this surah was, when they couldn't come out with any explanation, how the Prophet has this Qur'an, and they can't make anything equal to Qur'an, so then they said, oh, this is a jinn doing this. This is a jinn doing this. He is majnoon, not in the sense he's crazy, but he's majnoon in the sense some jinn is inside him, and he makes him say these word verses. So now what does Allah say as a response to that? <laughs> I don't swear by the stars when they appear and recede. This is not about stars and the jinns. It's not about this. And then Jibreel is described here in these few ayahs, and then it ends with saying, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ Sahib is who? Who is Sahib? The meaning of Sahib is somebody you spend, there are two definitions of Sahib. Sahib, one meaning of Sahib is someone you spend, you, you, you are in with the bed with. Okay? The other meaning of Sahib is somebody who you spend your lifetime with. وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ This man, Muhammad وسلم, who you've spent your entire life, you know he's not possessed, is the point that's being made here. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know when they used to go to the astronomers, this is the last point I'm trying to make, when they used to go to the astronomers, they always have to pay, right? Especially rich people, they want to know what their future holds, so they'll pay the, uh, the, the soothsayer, Here's a twenty dollars. Tell me, you know, I just had a baby. My my daughter-in-law just became pregnant. Oh, I just started this business. They want to know, right? And they pay money. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, al ghaybi bi dhanin. Dhanin is when you take money to tell people fortunes. So wamahu is he Muhammad taking money like these fortune tellers? He's not taking money for for saying what he's saying. وَمَاهُ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِذَنِينَ وَمَاهُ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And this is not the statement of a shaytan al-rajim. And then, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going? إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ This is just a reminder from the Lord of the Worlds. And then the surah continues. Inshallah, we'll continue next time.
Yeah, that's fine. Abu Luqa only has the stuff from Allah, he will have money.